All right, Ms. Palmer here. Uh, video on ASCII. Okay, it's a data representation. Uh, just seen a video on um, w what the different data types are and why we have different data types. And now, so basically, thinking about actually how are we storing text on a computer system. So, yeah, as I just said, how is text actually stored on a computer? So, basically, remember all data on a computer is stored in numerical form, everything is in binary. So, therefore, characters that we see on the screen and we interact with in whatever manner, they also must be stored in numerical form. So the way of visualizing it in a way is a bit like when you were a kid, okay? So like a blue kid who wants to send the video to the Vesti kid over there. And so uh, they basically want to send it in code and they every letter converts into a number. They write those numbers down and send it off and at the other end then that can be interpreted, okay? So that's kind of like the way it's been, the way every letter is represented by a particular uh, code, okay? And the letters that are available represented by particular codes are what we call the character set. So um, basically back in the day, uh, different systems, computer systems had different methods of encoding the data. There were like 60 odd popular methods. Okay, so it's a bit like now Blue Kid is sending a, 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 a sending data, a message to um, Kid in the Vest. And so she wants to send a message to Big Cab. So she encodes it using her system, 297312, sends it off to Vesti Kid. Vesti Kid, however, has his own system for encoding the data. So when he tries to decode it, he's like, WTF mate, I've got no idea what actually what the data means. So really what you ended up with, you ended up now with another habit system in the middle having to translate the data from one system so that it can be interpreted by another, okay? So um, you had this huge problem, okay? Even sometimes uh, computer systems from the same manufacturer may even have had different um, uh, methods of encoding data. So what was the solution? You've got to develop a common standard that everybody can understand and that's basically where ASCII came in. So ASCII stands for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, okay? And they basically came up with um, a character set, okay, which contained basic Latin characters, uh, punctuation and command codes as well. Um, so it allowed computers to then share data between them. Now, um, ASCII took a long time to be um, implemented um, as a standard uh, that was a, a, a well-known widely used standard we're talking until the 80s even though it was um, formalized in the 1960s okay so um, ASCII basically uses a byte per character where seven bits were used for data and one bit was used for the parity bit okay so because you're using seven bits of the data big negative of it is you only got 128 characters and also you were limited to the English English characters only if you don't know what the ASCII table looks like, literally just go on to ASCIItable.com, okay? And you can see, um, you know, w every character with the corresponding code, okay? Now, that's obviously a bit of a problem um, when you've got such a limited range of, you've got uppercase, lowercase alphabet, you know, a bunch of uh, punctuation codes and, n and numbers, and that's it, okay? You know, you need to have more workable codes in order to be able to actually do stuff really with your computers. So then they realize, okay, let's, ex let's, let's develop what we call extended ASCII. So this time we're using the full eight bits. So you've got 256 available characters, all right? So you don't actually have 256 characters. You've got the original ASCII characters plus 120 extra codes. There's no real one standard form of extended ASCII, okay? It was kind of like um, the extra 128 character codes were modified based upon um, any manufacturer requirements or any kind of localization, okay? And the reason for me talking about localization is that it actually caused problems because what happens if you're in like Korea or India or Japan or where China or wherever you are, okay? You got your own character set, okay? You got your own language, you want to store characters in your own way. So basically, ASCII has been superseded by Unicode, right? Unicode is, comes along in different um, forms, okay? So you got UTF 8, which is using 8 bits, which is 128 characters, UTF 16, which uh, is using 16 bits, which gives you 65,500 characters, and then UTF 32 which is obviously using 4 bytes, 32 bits, 4 bytes, uh, which gives you quite a large number of characters. What's that? 4 billion? Yeah, 4.3 billion characters. All right. So um, that obviously then allows, uh, you know, people around the world to use uh, their character sets within Unicode, um, to, you know, to create kind of like standardized international system. Okay. Now, how do you ensure compatibility? So if I got a Unicode, um, Unicode, so I'm using Unicode 16 here with 65 and a half thousand characters in my two bytes. Okay, what I what they basically did was they made sure that the first 128 Unicode codes co 
corresponded to the to the ASCII code. So that way you got backwards compatibility with um, old systems, but also you got forward compatibility because any future um, uh, versions of Unicode will make sure that they have that um, those you know standardized first 128 characters. All right. So basically now what we're storing that text. So we got the say I want to store the word cat. Okay, cat according to ASCII has the following codes: C is a 99, lowercase a is a 97, and lowercase t is 116, and therefore that can then be stored in the corresponding binary. Okay, and that's basically how we're storing text on the computer system. So you should be able to understand how text is stored in the computer system, and you should understand the limitations of ASCII and the benefits of Unicode. Um, job done.